Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. It's Marissa Explains It All. It's finally my favorite season and I am so excited to show you guys what I came up with for fall decor this year. So I love Pottery Barn style, but the price tag just does not fit my budget. And so a lot of these things I feel like I can make myself. The handmade things are special and I enjoy doing the crafting myself. So if you're interested, stay tuned and I'll be right back. So I took a look at the fall lookbook this year and found a lot of things that I thought were really neat looking and I could recreate. So I'm gonna show you guys what I did and I wouldn't probably call these dupes necessarily just because they don't look exactly the same, but maybe Pottery Barn inspired. So let's get started. First up are these rustic pottery pumpkins. These are on the Pottery Barn website for $29.50 to $59 depending on the size. So to start, you'll need any sort of pumpkin form. And I found these three at the Dollar Tree. This orange one is actually foam and the other two are ceramic. Thought they were the perfect forms to begin uh, starting with. So you'll also need some craft paint and these are 54 cents from Walmart. I am using white, warm buff, khaki, and Canyon Sunset. You'll need Dollar Tree paint brushes and if you want a different looking pumpkin stem you can get this Crayola Model Magic for $4.54. You'll also need baking soda and flour. So to start I'm just making my stem look a little bit more realistic and making it a little bit longer um, for this foam pumpkin and I did this by applying a chunk of the Model Magic clay and just shaping it by rolling it, twisting it, kind of just um, crooking it over and I even used a fork to get some extra texture. Next, I mixed up my paint, and I'm starting here with a quite a bright terracotta color. So I'm using the burnt orange, tan, and white just to get the shade I like. And then I added in my baking soda. So I started with a little bit of a sprinkle and just added a little bit at a time, mixing it in until it's a nice paste consistency. And uh, once it looks like that, it is time to paint. It only took one coat for me to get it to look like this, and it looks already much better than the bright fluorescent orange. And once your pumpkin is dry or almost dry, go ahead and sprinkle on your flour and use your paintbrush to dust it on. Next, I used a little bit of burnt orange color on my plate and just added a little white to it to get a lighter terracotta shade in the same color family. So after painting, I got a little ambitious and tried to actually flower it while it was still wet and it definitely started peeling the paint. So wait until it is dry. <laughs> so I did that and this is much better dusting on. Next, I started with a clean plate and I gave it a coat of white and just a touch of the khaki um, just to give it a nice little warm white color. And I finished with the flower when dry and here it is all done. You could really do any color you like, but mine kind of came out a little orangey. You could kind of adjust it to any color you like. I did all three for $7.95. <laughs> Next up is the easiest in the bunch. So I saw these fall florals on the Pottery Barn website for $129 and wanted to replicate this also inside a pumpkin vase. So I grabbed the Dollar Tree plastic pumpkin for $1.25 and some cheap white spray paint from Walmart for $1.97 and then some florals actually from the Dollar Tree. And I was so surprised to see the beautiful quality of these. These are peonies, amaranthus, uh, one thing was called bouquet and then the berries were actually labeled as berries. And so I ripped the plastic handle off from the bucket and I started by giving it two coats of spray paint and then let it dry and then simply arranged the flowers inside. So this is what it looks like all done and it actually came out very pretty and total cost uh, for $8.95, which included the vase that the Pottery Barn version did not. Next up are these brass candlesticks. On the Pottery Barn website, they are $49.50 to $59. I spotted this spray bottle in the health and beauty aisle of Dollar Tree for $1.25 and I was inspired. And so I also bought these glass bowls from Dollar Tree for $4.25. And I used some super glue that I already had, Gorilla Glue brand. And then I'm also using this can of Krylon Shortcut spray paint and the shade Gold Leaf. I'm also using these Dollar Tree candles to put inside. So I started by taking off the top from the spray bottle and then simply super gluing one of the glass bowls on top. And the clear glass made it really easy to sort of line up and get it right in the center. And so just press down really firmly and then make sure you let it dry. And once dry, it was able to go out side where I was spray painted it with the gold leaf uh, spray paint from Krylon and then let it dry and then once it was done just put the candle inside and this is the finished product all done for about six dollars and 79 cents 
Next up, I saw these really adorable cozy pumpkin pillows on the Pottery Barn website for $63.50. And you can actually buy fuzzy fabric, but to keep it simple, I just picked up a Walmart bath towel for $2.94. The poly fiber fill was $2.99 from Hobby Lobby, and jute is also uh, $3.99 from Hobby Lobby, but you can also buy this from Walmart. You'll also need some hot glue and scissors, needle, and thread. So I started by laying out the bath towel folded in half. I then folded it again in quarters and then again to make a triangle. So then I took a pair of really sharp fabric scissors and cut off the excess. It was a little bit difficult because it was so thick and it took a little bit of work. Uh, so you could maybe, uh, maybe do this in steps, but I just cut it into a cone shape so that when I unfolded it, you, I ended up with a complete circle. So next, grab your needle and thread. And the key here is to make sure you have two strands of thread. Uh, a thicker thread is best. If you have a quilter's thread, that would be great. But essentially just going to take a running stitch all around the edge, just weaving in and out, using very large stitches, even bigger than basting stitches, and spaced out about an inch. So you can space these quite far out. And you can carefully cinch the fabric as you go if you need some more uh, line, but I just went ahead and tried to um, stitch and pull gently until you end up with something that resembles a shower cap. And then it's time to stuff your pillow with some polyfill. I start by adding tufts of polyfill and beginning to tighten the top as I go. Just uh, adding more until I feel like my pillow is as plump as I want it to be. I ended up actually adding more after I cinched it up because I just didn't think it looked full enough. And then it's time to pull your pillow really tight across the top and secure the thread. I didn't pull tight enough and I actually left a fairly large hole at the top that I'll have to actually work to fill um, with the stem. So it's best to avoid this just by cinching the fabric as tight as you can get it and leaving less uh, of a large hole at the top. Next, I cut a long piece of jute. I'm using a light tan here, but you can use any color and lay it on top of your pumpkin and then you'll flip it over and sort of turn it across and cross the jute like you would wrap a package. And then you will flip that uh, back to the top and twist again and then go back down and flip it and then repeat one last time so that you end up with your twine at the top and a star pattern with eight sections. Then just tie it and cut it off. I'm using the towel scraps to make the stem by rolling up a long piece and hot gluing it to secure it and just kind of roll it up nice and tight. And then I stuff it in the top and start gluing it down. I used a lot of hot glue here to, and kind of held the fabric in place as it dried just to get rid of some of the large gap on top, which won't be necessary if you can get the hole smaller than I did during the stitching process. I then wrapped the jute around the stem, hot gluing as I went until I got to the top. So I glued the twine down in sort of a circular pattern at the top um, just to make it look a little bit more finished. And this is the final product. It looks so cute and it was only $9.92 total cost. Next up are these mercury glass votives. They're on the Pottery Barn website for $39.50 for six. And I saw these various votives at the Dollar Tree for $1.25 each that I thought that I could really um, do something similar because I liked the textures. Um, some were frosted and some were bumpy. Some had sort of a geometric um, shape to them. So I bought these and I also bought a metallic uh, spray paint for $5.98 from Walmart. And if you can get looking glass paint, that's the correct way to do this method but my Walmart was sold out, so I was just using this metallic spray paint. And you'll also need some flameless candles from the Dollar Tree. And I also bought a clear plastic pumpkin that was a, a mini candy dispenser from the Dollar Tree that I forgot to film, but it's included here in my spray paint shot. So I'm using a mercury glass spray paint method that's more successful with that looking glass spray paint, but I'm just gonna use what I can find. But essentially you do a very light coat of spray paint and then immediately spray it with a bottle of vinegar and water to give it the mist spots. And then you just let it dry for like 30 seconds and then you repeat the process of spraying the paint and then spraying the vinegar water. And so that's what you see me doing here, just a light coat of spray paint, spraying with vinegar water and then respraying the paint kind of a couple times until you get the look that you like. And you can also dab some with a paper towel and this is what they look like all together when they're all done and dry definitely cute and much cheaper uh, the mercury glass effect 
that uh, turned out the best on the pumpkin that started out as clear and the frosted glass looked pretty good as well. The other two didn't seem to hold the effect quite as much, but I thought they still looked really great in a group and with the candles in place. Next up are these bronze candlesticks. They retail on the Pottery Barn website for $89 for this set of three. And so I actually saw this Parmesan cheese dispenser in Dollar Tree and got inspired and to replicate it. And I also picked up some dark bronze hammered metal spray paint from Walmart for $5.98 and a pillar candle from the Dollar Tree. So what I did was I removed the lid from the Parmesan cheese dispenser and turned it upside down to use. And I actually also thought about using one of the Dollar Tree mini glass bowls, but I liked the flatter look instead and not such a cupped look that the bowl gave. So I did end up using the top and just super glued the top down. And once it was dry, I took it outside and spray painted it bronze. And here it is with two of the pillar candles from Dollar Tree stacked to get a taller look. And then this is what it looks like with just one candle. Up close, it has a neat metal effect. I thought it was kind of a neat finish. And I did this for $14.73. So that is everything. As you can see, not exact duplicates, but really cute pieces that I can put around my home this fall. So I'm excited to do that. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Otherwise, I will see you next time for the next DIY. Bye guys.